Greetings, everybody. This is Grant Peters and Bruce Koppel here with an important message. We're going to be discussing the Indiana Lifeline Law today. Okay, so as most of you know, um, I teach a criminal justice class, and in the last couple of weeks we've been talking about multiple things, law obviously, but um, the Indiana Lifeline Law came up, and I'm real proud of our students. Um, you'll see around the school pretty soon some posters um, really promoting that law, um, and and. And I took a little bit of responsibility because it, uh, I'm not sure everybody knows that this is, this is out there. So I want to tell you a little bit about this law, and Mr. Peters and I will, and then we're going to show you a, a quick video. So this Indiana Lifeline law also is part of the Indiana Good Samaritan law that allows young people to get help for themselves and others who need immediate medical attention due to alcohol poisoning, drug overdose, sexual assault, or other emergencies without the concern of being prosecuted for underage drinking. That also includes public intoxication, minor in possession of alcohol, minor in consumption, and minor transporting. Now, do understand on, the, on some of that, on the sexual assault piece, it doesn't, it, it means that you'll still be uh, potentially arrested for a crime of any sexual assault, but it's the alcohol piece that comes into play. So, um, so make sure you understand that. Any person calling or texting 911 to get medical help for someone will not be prosecuted for underage drinking if he or she fully cooperates with the police. Other young people present will not be arrested for underage drinking if they do these three things. Number one, remain on the scene until police and an ambulance arrive. Two, provide their full name and any other re relevant information to the police, and third, cooperate with authorities once they arrive. This law does not provide protection for other crimes, such as providing alcohol to a minor, driving while intoxicated, or any sexual assault. So connected to that, I'm going to give you a good decisions message and also clarify what Mr. Koppel just went over. Make good decisions. Be yourself and be a friend to others. Our message for teens is to choose to not drink because it's illegal, potentially dangerous, and can lead to making bad decisions that could hurt yourself and others. I want to clarify that we do not promote underage drinking. We do not promote underage drinking, but we recognize that it does sometimes happen. We want, to ev we want everyone to be aware of the Indiana Lifeline Law that we're discussing here in order to save lives. In an emergency, teens should not be afraid to pick up the phone and text or dial 911. Please get immediate help if you think someone is in need of medical attention. We also want you and your friends to discuss this law prior to an emergency and to agree with each other that the others have their permission to call or text 911 if it is necessary. The Indiana Lifeline Law is simple. Make the call, get help, and save a life. Now, the death of Brett Finbloom prompted many of us as parents to talk one-on-one -on -one with our own kids. If there were a party, underage drinking, and someone was hurt, would your kids call 911? Well, tonight, for the first time, hear from the kids who were there about those frantic final moments. We are not naming the kids who talked to protect their futures. And it was one of those things that when you saw him, it was like, okay, he's passed out drunk. Like, those there say Brett had stepped outside to make a phone call to get some fresh air, that he'd been outside 30 minutes before they found him passed out on the ground. They carried him inside to the couch. He's not responding. There was debate, confusion. What should they do? We went and got like a cold rag to, or like to put on his head. Someone tweeted a picture of Brett that he was passed out. At the time, it was funny. But eventually, they realized something was seriously wrong. Instead of 911, they called his parents. My first reaction to whether or not I should leave a voicemail, I was like, God, if Brett wakes up and he knows I called his parents, I was like, that would kill me. As the minutes passed, do they call 911? And if they do, what will happen? An arrest for underage drinking could ruin careers, dreams before they ever started. I went and called 911 and that's when people were running out of the house. She dialed 911, handed the phone to the one who lived there, 
and then she too ran. And we have a friend here. Um, we think that he's had too much to drink. We cannot wake him up right now. Um, we'd like to get an ambulance out here ASAP. It's, I cannot feel a pulse right now, so I'm, I'm really freaking out. The kids at the party scattered, running into a friend from another party down the street. Through Twitter and Instagram, he already knew that Brett was in trouble. He was not doing well, and I was like, well, is someone, when you hear a kid is blue, <laughs> That instantly struck me as he's not getting anything to his brain and something is wrong. Word was spreading on Twitter. Brett was drunk. Maybe something is wrong. People had texted me and told me and other people and, and I knew it wasn't good. Even outside the party, out of trouble, listen to what they said. Kids worried. People oh, were saying don't yeah. call, don't call. And people were telling me not to call. And I'm, you know, I wasn't even there, and people were saying, don't call. What was he drinking? Um, I think just, just vodka. When medics finally arrived, Brett's heart was stopped. He was rushed to the hospital. Nearly 100 kids gathered at the hospital to hold vigil, to pray. Tonight, a rare moment when underage drinking becomes not just words, but life-changing. The family would like me first to emphasize that None of them were prepared for the next words. The family would like for me to announce that Brett's passed away. Next to Germany. And we're planning on a funeral Thursday or Friday. <laughs> because of one night, Brett will not be a freshman. He will be an organ donor. Brett will not go to college. He's in a cemetery. Brett will not come home ever. This law is not new. The video you just watched, that happened. And it's from Carmel, Indiana, and it was devastating to a school community and a community as a whole. Again, this law is not new. As we get into the time of year of prom and graduation, I think it's important that you as students know that this law is available and it's out there. And hopefully you never make mistakes like this. But again, if it's, if it's out there, um, maybe it could just save a life. We appreciate you being attentive during this message because at the end of the day, we want everyone to have fun, but be safe. So we give you this information to have a safe time as we get into more activities, as Bruce referenced, with prom and other spring activities, and also everyone coming out of the COVID phase uh, to be active. So appreciate your attention and be safe, and we'll see you in the next recording.